You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of In Case of Emergency, Wes's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, and y'all, we're really gonna need it, because we're moving across the country, but, yeah. For, but yeah, y'all are gonna get rewards for supporting us, such as full access to our community Discord server and upcoming access to our uh, Not Safe for Work videos. All that for as little as five dollars. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up. Ooh, and let's go. All right. Oh yeah. Kiss him. Letting instinct guide you, you stand on the tips of your toes and kiss him. Hmm. West lets out a muffled noise of surprise before melting into the kiss. He recovers quickly, reciprocating with increasing intensity as he backs you into the door with a soft thunk, propping himself against the wood with one hand above your head. You hear him pant eagerly against your lips, the occasional growl going through his body as his tongue meets yours. I've been thinking about you all day. You can feel the rumble in his chest when he speaks, your hands pressed against the soft fabric of his shirt. With every movement, the soft fur and firm mounds of his chest undulate under your grasp. Okay. His hands roam down the small of your back until they find your ass, giving it a squeeze as he grinds his cock against yours. You've been pent up since that afternoon, and it doesn't take much until you're hard in your pants. Each languid stroke of Wes's hips sends pleasure up your spine. You hiss, you hiss into his mouth. Fuck. Take you off your pants. You fumble with your, belch with your belt latch, your fingers making short work of a loop tied around your waist. You can feel your knuckles graze Wes's hard cock, straining against his fly, and he twitches in response. Wes growls, his warm breath hot against your neck. He shucks his own layers, tossing his shirt over his shoulder and kicking his pants across the floor. You watch his, uh, you watch his popsicle bob free from the elastic of his underwear, pink and flush red. You can't help but think how weird it is that you're both wearing boxers. Under You're both wearing boxers under this medieval garb. Like, you're only part of this world on the surface level, or like the possibility of having sex here is an oversight. A glitch in the system. A paper coffee cup left on a set and never edited out. Little Game of Thrones. <laughs> but then you're both naked, and the leathery pads of Wes's hand wrap around your popsicle. And thinking about anything other than chasing pleasure becomes exponentially harder. In some circles, your slit. Spreading, yep, around the head, yep. It's not hard to chase his touch by bucking your hips into his grip. So you do, fucking into his hand as he lazily twists his fingers up and down. Yep. You like that? Wes growls at the top of your head, his voice raspy with desire. Yeah, fuck! Wes adjusts his grip so that he's holding your leaking popsicles together, each movement threatening to make your knees buckle. Your popsicle twitches against his. He starts stroking at a steady rhythm, and you watch the slick head of the, the slick part of the popsicle. Yep. Okay. Electricity goes up your spine every time your head brushes against the ass. Yep. All you can hear are your low pants and the wet sounds of your... Wet sounds of your, uh... Mochi... Uh, yeah, so wet sounds of your mochi... Mochi sticks, I guess. Or just gliding again, gliding together under Wes's hand. Ha! Huh. Wes picks up the speed, setting the pace like he's done for the rest of the encounter. You don't have to do anything but lean into the wall and let yourself be rocked by the rhythm of Wes's strokes. The tension you're going coiling tighter and tighter. Come on, I want to see you come for me. Wes's low voice is low in your ear, his breath tickling the sensitive fur inside. You gasp as the sound sends you right up to the edge, your hands gripping into the wall behind you for support. The final stroke of your member, you spill onto your stomach and it's... Yep. Okay. Huh. Oh, holy shit! You have just enough awkwardness to feel Wes slow down, smirking as he releases your sticky, softening... goopy popsicle. He licks the back of his hand clean with a swipe of his pink tongue. It shouldn't be as hot as it is. As he pulls away, you can see that Wes is still hard. His popsicle bounces against the planes of his stomach, and he methodically strokes it as he takes it takes in your flush body. Let me help you with that. Want me to return the favor? In your post-sex confidence, you reach for his popsicle, ready to jerk or suck a frickin' his hand, but Wes leans away, panting. You don't have to. I want to. I'm offering because I want to, not because I have to. You raise an eyebrow at him. Trying to communicate your earnestness. <laughs> it's fine. You don't have to do anything. Second like Elmo. Drink some water. Because this scene is spicy hot. 
This isn't exactly what you're expecting to hear, but you gather that he's politely telling you no thanks, so what are you going to do? Uh, okay. You nod and awkwardly lean against the wood of the wall, resolving to watch him West jerk himself off. Maybe he just likes being watched, or maybe he just doesn't like being touched by other people. Maybe he just doesn't like handing over the reins. It's hot, but now that the... Yeah, but now that the, uh, the, the, but now that the goopy cheese stuff on your stomach is dry, there's nothing for you to do. You can't help but feel like you're overstaying your welcome. Should you leave, or...? After a moment, Wes finally finishes, his breath coming in short gasps when he comes into his hand. He wipes his paw against his thigh and calmly surveys the situation like a soldier taking in the aftermath of battle. We should get cleaned up. There's water downstairs. We weren't exactly expecting a cuddle session, but this feels a little brusque. We probably shouldn't go down at the same time. You nod. Not entirely sure what's just taken place. You want to ask what now, except that he's already answered that. You should go get cleaned up. You wait for a beat before leaving to clean yourself off. As you're heading back to your room, feeling your head clear, you hear loud coughing coming from down the hallway. That has to be Cedric. You knock on the door to Cedric's room. Hey, are you feeling okay? There's a non-committal mumble from the other side of the door. C can I come in? Another vague moan of pain. I'm taking that as a yes. You pull open the door to see Cedric lying in bed, his face pale and damp with sweat. The sheets are crumpled around him, like he's being to like he's been tossed and turning. Tossing and turning. Hey! Are you feeling any better? Uh, I... Uh, his answer is interrupted by a series of hacking coughs. I didn't get enough sleep last night. I'll be fine. He turns his head to you as you take a seat at the foot of the bed. I just need some rest. How's the murder case going? Nothing new. Elizabeth and Electra were trying to run away last night, which doesn't actually tell us anything about Lord Bogia. Cedric motions weakly towards his cheek, then points to you. That from Allie? You touch the same spot on your face and wince in pain. The place you got punched is still tender. Yeah, you know her? Ugh, <sighs> sorry about that. Not that well. I knew her through Electra, so a friend of a friend. What did you do? Hey, I didn't do anything. She has issues. She had to be wearing a ring on the hand when she had to she had to be wearing a ring on the hand she hit me with. A ring? What'd it look like? I don't know. She was wearing gloves. Cedric cocks his head and stares at the bruise on your face, as though it might reveal a cut in the carrot of the ring you were punched with. Did you say anything about it? Where she got it from? Uh no. You think it was special? I just thought, since Lord Bogia's ring was missing and all, you think she killed him? No! I mean, I don't think so. I just know that the ring was supposed to go to Electra when she got married. It's a family heirloom. She was supposed to exchange rings with that prince she was engaged to. The marriage that she was running away from. Yeah, so if she wanted to give that ring to someone else, Cedric stares at you meaningfully. She wanted to give it to Elizarin. Cedric nods. So Electra stole the ring from her dad before she left. She must have taken it that night. But for all we know, he was already poisoned by then, which doesn't help us. Cedric closes his eyes and rests his head on the thin pillow. I'm glad she worked up the courage to leave. She tried before, but she's not the best at standing up for herself. What disappointed look and she'd crumble. It sounds like you knew her pretty well. We weren't together, if that's what you're asking. We were just friends. I told you, Wes and I came down here to run a favor for the Bogias. They asked us to recover some relics from their family mausoleum. The place was crawling with ghosts. That's where I got the sword, which they let me keep, as well as the signet ring that Lord Bogia always wears. We had a lot of free time back then, so we hung around, and the Bogias threw us this lavish party in their home. It lasted a few days. <sighs> Sorry, y'all. It's night time. One second. Water time. Wes was obviously busy chasing tail, so Electra and I just hung out a lot during the downtime. Of course he was. The thought makes your stomach churn. Cedric sighs like he's remembering a bittersweet memory. It was our last time out bef before the void started showing up. Cedric frowns, clutching his chest as he starts to hack violently. He coughs into his elbow, the wet timber of his cough sounding worse than usual. Hey, are you alright? You move up the bed to reach out for him when your hand hits something hard and long under the covers. Ripping off the sheets, you reveal the dark green scabbard of the Bogia short sword wedged under Cedric's thigh. Seriously, what are you doing? You pull the sword out from under him, and an immediate wave of nausea overtakes you. A strange humming sound emanating from your own blade that pierces your ears. You throw down the blade and let it clatter to the floor. The sensation stops. 
Cedric stares at you, wiping something pink from his mouth. It's blood. That blade is super fucking cursed, man. It's a good luck charm. It was supposed to ward against stuff like that. Cedric pushes himself into a sitting position, licking the blood from his lips. There's blood in his arm and a spatter of the stuff on his sheets. Give it back. He says with he says this with more energy than you've seen him muster all day. There's something wrong with that thing. I don't feel anything when I picked it up. You're literally coughing up blood. It's just, I care about it, okay? I know that sounds stupid. You care about it. I don't think that's stupid. I would feel the same way. Cedric shrugs and nods, folding his knees into his chest. Yeah. Sort of that where you get rid of it. You should get rid of the sword. Cedric sighs, slumping against the headboard. Okay, you're probably right. The two of you sit in silence for a moment. He looks a lot better now that he doesn't have the sword on him. It feels ironic that something that was supposed to protect him turned out to be what was making him sick. Huh. But wasn't... Do you think we'll have to pay for these? Cedric stares down at his sheet speckled with blood, his eyebrows scrunching together in contemplation. That sword, you said you found it with the ring? Yeah, they were both family heirlooms. They're supposed to bring health and fortune to the bearer. About a lot of good that did me. But Lord Boshi wore the ring, too, longer than anyone else, and he was fine. The same night he gets sick, he's found without the ring. What are you saying? Why would similar objects make one person sick and another person not sick? I think there's someone we need to go visit. You spring to your feet before the idea can escape you. It's still a half-formed thing, nebulous and only existing in that funny short-term memory space where you do math in your head. You need to get to the Bogias before you forget. You'll work out the details on the way. Where are we going? You nearly crash into Luke in the doorway of the tavern. Hey! You figured it out? Oh, come on! I thought we were done for today! Luke sighs and pinches his brow, but there's no time to wait. Someone grabs him by the back of the shirt and drags him along the cobble roads. The crickets are chirping when you arrive. The paved road up to the up to the Bogia Manor ends in, a ends in a heavy wrought iron gate, black bars twisting into sharp spikes at the top. The guards, for some convincing and name-dropping, reluctantly lead you to Lord Bogia's room and rap on the door. There's a shuffling from the other side. One moment. Electra opens the door, dressed like she's gotten in from a day outside, or maybe like she's just about to head out. Her eyes widen when she sees you. Hey, can we talk for a minute? Electra blanches. I suspect this is a conversation we should have privately. She nods to the guards, who shuffle reluctantly in place, hesitant to vacate the area. It takes another stern look before they march down the stairs, and Electra closes the heavy wooden door behind them with a click. The room is just as you left it, though a window has been cracked to let the cool, the cool night air in, drapes moving gently in the wind. Lord Boshi breathes shallowly in bed, the rise and fall of his chest barely perceptible. You want to talk about, you want to talk to me about what happened to my father? Yes, but where's Elizabeth? He kind of needed her for this. Your clever reveal hinges on it. In the meantime, you can buy time by pacing back and forth across the thick carpet, tapping your chin in loops, toking a pipe. Allie, what does she have to do with anything? Ha! She's walked right into your trap. Why? Why she has everything to do with this? After all, she's hiding. Looks like you know, water time. Behind the drapes. Here. You strut across the room and confidently throw open the drapes. A blast of dust and cold air hits your nose, sending you into a coughing fit. There's no one there. Just been a few dust bunnies that are scattered to the wind as soon as you pushed aside the curtains. Everyone is staring at you. Hang on. She's definitely... Here! You cross the bed and fling open the doors to the armoire. Dust. More dust. And a lizard. Pressed into a corner filled with spare drapery, coughing into her elbow. In the moonlight, you're sure to see it. There's a spray of blood when she coughs. Electra moves to intercept you, placing herself between you and the closet. What do you want with her? Have a look. Electra regards you suspiciously before turning around. Takes her a moment to ascertain what's happening as Elizabeth pulls her sleeve towards her chest. But then it hits her. Allie, what happened? She rushes to her side, wrapping an arm around Elizabeth's shoulder. She holds her close, gently wiping the blood from her lips. You're not well. I should have done something. We should have gotten help. I, I promise. I'm fine. Her protests interrupted by another bout of coughing. Lecture holds her close, rocking her against her chest. Cedric winces in sympathy. Wes watches the proceedings with a somber expression. You shake your head to push him out of mind. All right. It's time to see if your hypothesis is correct. 
You've been sick all day. You probably felt tired in the beginning, then worse and worse. And you started coughing blood. Sound familiar? All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out the Patreon if you can. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.